so this lesson, we're going to deal with like terms. We're going to put a couple of <clears throat> steps together. You've dealt with like terms before, but we're going to kind of take it one notch higher, which actually you probably did this in Algebra 1. Um, hopefully it clicks when you see it. Okay, so here's the deal. These look terrifying, but they're really not. When you look at this, you see fractions, terrifying. You see variables, terrifying. You see exponents, terrifying. And then you see negatives thrown in there, and it's all encompassing, and it looks horrible. It's really not that big of a deal. Okay, first thing you need to understand, whole numbers, just simplify them. 30 over 10 is 3. There are a couple of steps here. Your first step, we're going to make this a flat problem. What I mean by that is we are going to move everything up. So I'm going to pick anything except for a whole number, because whole numbers I'm just going to do. 30 divided by 10 is just 3. I'm going to pick anything else up from the bottom of my fraction, and I'm going to move it to the top of my fraction. And we've sort of already talked about this. When I move y to the negative 1 from the bottom of my fraction to the top to make it flat, what's going to happen to that negative exponent? It's going to become positive. Remember, when I move things up, the sign of the exponent changes. Don't think of it as making it negative. Because if it's already negative, it's going to become positive. Also, don't lose your understood ones here, all right? So, step one, make everything flat. 3 over 10 simplifies. 2 to the fourth, or 2 to the second power simplifies. And then we're going to pick everything that's on the bottom of our fractions and move it up. So when I do that, this is what I get. Let's walk through this. If I can get my pen to work. 3 over, 30 over 10 becomes 3. And that x1 is already on the top of a fraction. This is already flat, but that can become 4. My third term, I have to move x with an understood 1 from the bottom of the fraction to the top. When I move it from the bottom to the top, the sign of the exponent changes. So it goes from a positive 1 to a negative 1. And this is already... <coughs> Well, okay, let me explain. I've, there's a step not written down here. My top here is y. When I move, I don't know why I circled that. When I move y to the negative 1 from the bottom to the top, it becomes a positive 1. So technically what I have on the top is y understood 1, y1 which simplifies to y2. I'm sorry that's not written in there, but let me sort of add that in here. We're going to add a little extra step here because what I should have is 2y understood 1, y negative 1 becomes a positive 1, and y1, y1 becomes y squared. So that little step should have been written in there. I'm sorry. So I've made it flat. Then I'm going to add or subtract, depend on your signs, my like terms. So I have x negative 1, x negative 1, those match. y squared, y squared, those match. So I'm going to do for my x's, I'm going to do 3 minus 2, watch your signs. For my 4, I'm going to do 4 plus 2, <clears throat> which is going to give me 3 minus 2 is 1. Remember the coefficient or the big number in front changes, but the exponent does not. And there's my answer. So that looks like a lot, sounds like a lot, but once you start doing it, it's not too terrible. Now let's walk through this one. So what I have is 3xy <clears throat> negative 2 minus 4x squared y squared plus 7x squared over xy squared. Step 1, make it flat. Now those first two terms are already flat. So all I really have to do is pick this up and move it from the top to the bottom. Now don't forget there's an understood 1 with that x. So when I move that up, 
my first term doesn't change because it's already flat. My second term doesn't change, it's already flat. But my, I wrote this in a different order, my y positive 2 becomes y negative 2. My x understood 1 becomes x negative 1. Now the order of this doesn't matter that I wrote it with the x and y swipped, switched because they are in one term. So you can change that order, it doesn't matter. Now I can simplify this by combining x squared and x negative 1. So x2 and x negative 1 is going to give me x1. 2 plus negative 1 is 1. Really hoping you did this in algebra 1 and you're remembering this. So I made it flat. Now I need to see if there are any like terms. And I know this looks a little different than this because of that. But remember that one is always understood to be there. So technically those two terms match. And remember when we're adding like terms, we add the coefficients and we keep the term. So three x y negative two plus seven x y negative two gives me 10 x y negative two. And this one is all by itself, so it just stays. So make it flat. And then if you need to simplify, like we had to simplify this one, simplify. So make flat. If needed, simplify any terms. Simplify any terms. And then add or subtract your like terms, and you're done. Let's do some practice problems. All right, you know the drill. Here's some practice problems. Um, give these a shot and um, then come back and we'll see how you did. Um, write them all down, pause the video, work them, and then um, I'll work them with you. Right, so let's work to this first one. So step one, we're going to make it flat. And I did not type these answers. We're going to handwrite them um, because typing them... Um, takes me forever with all of these exponents. So I'm gonna move my a negative one from the bottom to the top, it's gonna to become a positive one. I'm gonna move my b three up, it's gonna become negative. I'm gonna move my a one up, it's gonna become negative. Remember what I'm not moving doesn't change. So those things that are already on the top don't change. Now this, remember anything to the first exponent, I'm sorry, to the zero exponent becomes one. And because I'm multiplying these numbers three times one, it doesn't change anything. So technically, you can just sort of eliminate that. When I bring my A understood one up, I will tell you people lose that one a lot because they don't have it written there, so they don't see it. My negative two becomes positive. So anything from the bottom, move it to the top, and the sign of the exponent changes. Now I'm going to simplify within my terms. This is already simplified. So I'm just going to rewrite 5b negative 1a1. And really, let's, let's just do it this way. The truth is when you write your answers, they like them in alphabetical order. Now that's not going to change anything for me, but if you go take a college entrance exam or an SAT or a any of those kinds of things, they're probably going to write them with them in order. And I can change the order within my terms. It's not a problem. Now, this second term, though, I can simplify. So what I'm going to do just within this term is I'm going to find my A's and find my B's. My coefficient stays. A squared, A negative 1, becomes A1. Because remember, I'm, I add them b2, b negative 3, 2 minus 3 is negative 1. I can simplify within here. My a's can simplify. My coefficient stays. a negative 1, a2 becomes a1. And then I have b3, and that just stays. Now I have to see if I have any like terms. a1, b negative 1, a1, b negative 1. This has an A1, but it has a B3, so therefore it doesn't match. 
So 5 minus 7 is negative 2. And this little term just stays all by itself. Now the truth is I should not leave this this way. I should move all of my negative exponents to the right place. However, I'm not going to make you do that right now. We will work our way there. So right now you can leave it just like this, all right? Make it flat. Add any like terms. Let's look at the second one. So I'm going to make this flat. When I do that, oh, that's a terrible plus sign. Let me fix that. 2xy, and then my x negative 1 is going to come up and become positive 1. Now I'm going to simplify within my terms. xx becomes x squared. xx becomes x squared. yy becomes y squared. xx becomes x squared. And y just stays as y. Now do I have any like terms? Yes, I do. x squared y, x squared y. 8 plus 2 is 10. And he doesn't have anyone to go with him, so he's just going to stay single. Okay? And let's look at our last one. We're going to make this one flat. I kind of scooted over. This one looks like it has a lot of stuff in it. I'm going to write my understood ones in there so I don't lose them. If you find yourself losing those understood ones, just write them in there. All right, I'm going to pick my x negative 1 up. I'm going to move it from the bottom to the top. My negative 1 becomes positive 1. I'm going to move my y3 up, and it's going to become negative. I'm going to pick up my x negative 3. It's going to become positive. I don't need to lose my understood 1, x1 negative is going, is going to become negative and then that y is going to become a negative 2. So I made everything flat. Now let's look within our terms. Within this term I have an x squared and an x1 which gives me x cubed. Now within this one I have an x and an x which gives me x squared. y2, y1, y negative 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 minus 3 is 0. So that just goes away. Technically, it becomes a 1, but within the term, it goes away. It just vanishes. Now, I have a y3, a y negative 3. That kind of cancels each other out. And then a y negative 2. x3, x negative 1. So that gives me x squared. y negative 2. Now, I feel like I've messed up somewhere, but um, hopefully not. In this form here, I can't really change anything. I'm sorry, I'm looking at my middle term. I feel like I messed up x, x, y, up. Okay, so um, there's no like terms at this point. So that is my answer. All right, you have homework to do. Um, if you get bogged down in it, let me know, and I will do what I can to help you.